Hey guys, welcome back to another GG Gaming patch update. Uh, guys, today is patch day and we are introducing and seeing the new Fortnite version 8.10 patch notes. We're gonna go ahead and go through these and see what Fortnite has introduced to us today. Let's go ahead and go through them right now. So what's new? The baller, keep the good times rolling. Combine your boost and grapple to perform unbelievable feats with the new vehicle addition to Battle Royale. So this one is the baller. If you've seen Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, then you've seen this particular vehicle, the uh, little hamster ball. Basically, Fortnite added one additional element, which is the grappler, which allows you to swing around like Spider-Man in a hamster ball. So it's pretty cool. Vending machines. These convenient machines now dispense things free of charge, but only provide one item weapon before disappearing. Now, now, I believe that they instituted this because of the reduction in materials. So now we are maxed out at 500 for each one of the different materials, wood, brick, and metal. And I believe that they did this particular change to uh, basically fit in line with what they're trying to do. Their whole point is trying to accomplish a fun mechanism. So basically the items for convenient machines are there. It allows you to choose an item and then the minute you choose it, it'll disappear. So choose wisely guys, choose wisely. Weapons and items, the baller. This single seat vehicle is found at expedition outposts and around pirate camp loot stashes. So you can find them around pirate camps. Uh, use the attached grappler and boost functionality to pull yourself up cliffs or swing through the trees. The driver is protected from damage, but the baller is vulnerable to enemy weapon fire. You only get 300 health with this, guys. Also, the infantry rifle, this was removed. The common, well, actually, they removed the common rarity of the infantry rifle. The heavy assault rifle, adjusted rarity from rare, epic, and legendary to common, uncommon, and rare. So basically, they bumped everything down one, uh, took out the legendary, uh, and basically moved it, shifted everything over by one. All right, base damage scaling for common, uncommon, rare is 36, 38, and 40. Also, the clingers reduced max stack size from 10 to six. So they reduced the max stack size of clingers from 10 to six to match up with everything else. They're reducing everything else down to six as well, basically for better gameplay. So you, people can just spam clingers at you. Now the vending machines, they remove the material cost. Each vending machine will be destroyed after claiming an item. Common and uncommon vending machines have been removed and they removed mounted turrets from legendary vending machines as well. Also reduced availability of treasure maps and floor loot from 0.53% to 0.27% and reduced the availability of treasure maps from chest loot from 0.325% to 1.65%. There's some bug fixes also. The, they fixed the rocket smoke trails disappearing instantly on explosion. They also fixed an issue where the popping audio for balloons would continue to play after using balloons to get to max build height while using a vehicle. They fixed an issue where buried treasure would not auto pick up when auto pick up weapons setting was enabled. Fixed an issue where buried treasure chests could be placed on the starting island. So we don't want that. Fixed an issue where using an impulse grenade or shockwave grenade while jumping on a hoverboard causes the player to rapidly rotate. So those were all of the items in the weapons plus item slot. Let's go ahead and check out the gameplay elements. A lot of people want to see what's going on within the gameplay. So in gameplay, we see the battle royale crossplay matching under went and undergone some changes as well. They combined the Xbox One and PS4 pools together. This requires you to opt in to crossplay. Players opting out are restricted to creative mode and playgrounds. Now they combined the mobile and switch pools together before switch players were combined with xbox one and ps4 crossplay parties um this kind of was probably if, if you're a switch player you're probably thinking oh this is kind of unfair because of the way switch players play with the two controllers uh, hand in hand but uh, now they've combined the switch players with the mobile players because it seems like that would fit more switch is more considered a mobile platform anyway um they are saying 
Epic is saying that they expect on average better per game experience for both mobile and Switch players as well. Motivating factor is unlocking optimization potential, allowing us to run, allowing Epic to run more playlists during more hours of the day while supporting more data center locations. So please provide Epic with feedback on your experiences that you're having. Now, this was a funny one. They reduced infinite dab. They announced that they reduced infinite dab duration from 12 hours to 11 hours in the front end. And if you just read that at it as is, and then you just didn't read anymore, you would think, hey, why they reduced it? But then they said, just kidding. They increased infinite dab duration from 12 hours to 13 hours in the front end. Now, if you've been reading the patch updates, you notice that they have been increasing this for a little while. They've been just bumping it up an hour at a time. So they just keep bumping it up an hour. Um, now, elimination credit is now awarded to the last damager in cases of logging out self-elimination and eliminations due to storm damage. So if you're the last damager, then basically you will be awarded the elimination uh, if these persons are left in the storm or uh, some other, if they self-eliminate themselves, such as with uh, clingers or something like that. The current threshold timer is five seconds for storm eliminations and 15 seconds for logouts and self eliminations. So that means you still have to be in the game within 15 uh, seconds to actually get that particular kill. It'll elapse after 15 seconds. Now they added visual effects for the siphon on elimination. Uh, I'm thinking the siphon on is when the storm is kind of like uh, basically ticking down uh, for, for your body when you're about to be eliminated. Players can now build as soon as they impact anything after being launched by a pirate cannon. So if you notice when you were launched by a pirate cannon and you dropped, there was a little delay before you could build. So many people noticed that. Now they fixed that particular issue. So that, that was cool. Players can dance while holding on the balloon. So you can dance while holding onto the balloon now. A added pirate cannons, audio visualizer, HUD icon to, a, to be a cannon. Uh, players automatically enter the driver's seat when entering an empty vehicle. Oh my gosh, this this is good because sometimes when I entered a vehicle, I, I would get in and it would put me in the back. I would get shot and basically I wanted to get in to start driving the vehicle. So this is, is definitely a, a great addition. Added custom consume animations for the following items, bandages, med kits, small shield potion, shield potion, slurp juice, and chug jug. So these are basically quality of life things that they basically added. So you can look at the new animations that you're getting for when you're putting on bandages, med kits, or potions, and you can kind of see those uh, you can kind of see those play out as you're using those things. It's basically quality of life things. Now, the animations didn't really do anything other than you're sitting there for like 10 seconds or whatever. So you might as well get a different animation for each one. I think that's a good thing that they added. Uh, it gives you some, some visual acuity to the game so that you can, uh, visual entertainment to the game so that you're not uh, staring at the same emotes or animations over and over again. So I think that was a good quality of life fix to upgrade the game. Now, important bug fixes. Let's see what they fixed. They fixed pirate cannon collision that would block bullets for a passenger inside of the cannon. They also fixed pirate cannon not being able to shoot when moving backwards. They fixed an issue where a player may lose functionality when shooting themselves out of a pirate cannon. Uh, this happened to me. I, sh I tried to shoot out of a cannon and all of a sudden I couldn't control myself. The cannon was like all over the place. It shot me straight up in the air. And when I dropped back down, I ended up dying to fall down. And usually when you land on a cannon, you would just uh, land with an impact. It looks like a cannon exploded and then you wouldn't take fall damage. But I actually got fall damage. And this actually happened inside of a storm. So it was kind of like a one hit, a one hit thing. I think they fixed that too. Uh, fixed pirate cannon player impact explosion effects sometimes being delayed. That's true as well. Fixed an issue where pirate cannons flip onto their side, sliding across the ground for too long. Uh, you usually see this if you're on the other player watching the other player actually execute that animation. You'd see them sliding on their belly. Uh, fixed pirate cannons dealing damage to itself if fired in close quarters. Uh, yes, this is actually happening. If you fire it like inside of a house, it'll do damage to the actual cannon itself or any type of close quarters where it ricochets. 
fixed an issue where players wouldn't break through the structures when fired from pirate cannons at close range. Traps are no longer triggered by vehicles that are empty or carrying only friendly fire. Fixed an issue in extreme camera flickering situations that would cause an incorrect first shot when firing weapon. Oh my gosh, I this thing has happened so many times to me. It almost looks like you're you're gonna get your first shot. You know, you go through, um, you jump up, or you, you're using the AR. It looks like you're gonna get your first shot, and then a flicker happens, and then all of a sudden, fr firing from point blank range yields nothing. You get no shot. So I'm glad. I'm, I want to see if this is actually fixed when I when I start playing the game. So th that would be that would be awesome if it is. Fixed an issue with the conga emote not respecting environmental services like lava. Fixed an issue where a player may briefly stop their skydiving animation unexpectedly. Fixed an issue allowing emote canceling uh, during door open close animations. Fixed players holding buried treasure map upside down. Fixed an issue where pressing build and edit buttons in quick succession would enter edit mode on the blueprint piece instead of build instead of the build structure. So instead of build the structure. So this this um, this is definitely a, a needed a needed fix because sometimes you were right in the middle of building it would switch you to edit and then you wouldn't get to place your build you wouldn't get to place your build structure so um and it would look like they shoot through your walls when in actuality your wall isn't there drift boards no longer explode when exiting one near a mounted turret that's good fix ps4 players being unable to adjust mouse sensitivity all right so those were all of the fixes for the gameplay and those were all the gameplay mechanics that were added as well now they added some limited time modes uh welcome to the getaway so this is the in this mode players will race to find a jewel and take it to the getaway van before everyone else to win the match so we already know about this one this is kind of like they brought that getaway back again so i won't really go over this one if you want to see the limited time modes you can you can go ahead and take a look at the actual uh, patch notes for that. However, the events were added. Uh, they added some new events because of the new um, money events that are coming up. So tournament update, the gauntlet solo test event and gauntlet duo test events. They added another extended session, which will run 24 hours a day and concludes on March 19th at 12 a.m. Eastern time. The uh, matchmaking will no longer wait to create a match with closest scoring players available after eight minutes and will now require enough players with similar scores to start. Adjusted matchmaking point expansion to increase likelihood for high scoring players to be matched against other high scoring players as well. Now note, due to the playlist featuring uh, matchmaking based on your score, the quality of availability of matches may differ at certain times of day. So updating scoring solo plus two points will now be awarded after reaching 15th place. That's uh, it was previously previously 10th place. In duos, increased bus fare from minus two points to minus three points. This is a temporary solution for the duo event granting too many points to players due to eliminations, causing an inflation of points over the course of events. Now, plus two points will now be awarded after reaching seventh place. Previously, it was fifth place. That's in duos. The new tournament, which is called Scallywag Duos Cup, which is March 16th and 17th, will have $100,000 in cash prizes. As a test of our prize payment systems leading into the Fortnite World Cup, uh, we'll be holding a $100,000 duos tournament on March 16th and 17th. The prize pool will be distributed across all server regions with official rules and details released later this week. Participation in this event requires players to be in the top 3% global of either the solo or duo gauntlet test event as of 12 a.m. Eastern time on March 16th. Now, the format, round one will be all eligible players and then round two will be top 3,000 players from round one. So that's what's going on in the events category. 
Next up, we have performance. There's some performance tweaks that happened within this new patch as well. Uh, fixed some instances of packet loss that could occur with certain ISPs that are prone to reordering UDP network packets. Now, for those of you who are not in the know for networking, just understand that packets get reorganized and, and, and then reconstituted and rebuilt when they reach their destination. Uh, essentially, uh, this patch was made to actually uh, take up the slack for any lost packets that could occur. So reconstitution can be made more streamlined. All right, now you can find more on the context in a Reddit post uh, they made last week. The link is actually in the patch notes. Improved file IO performance for Xbox One. This reduces the occurrence of late streaming meshes. Fixed a regression in hitches on Switch due to GPU timing. Improved performance on Switch by reducing the likelihood of particles triggering when the day changes phases. Optimized the ship cannon. Optimized UI elements for large team modes. Improved performance for quick bar. Fixed hitches that occur on the match stat screen due to synchronously loading assets. In the audio category, they added a new audio for balloons while in the air. Okay, so that is great. Most of the times balloons just kind of sneak up on you and all of a sudden you die and you're like, what, what, what? Where, where did I die from? And it's a guy flying in a balloon right above you and he shot you in the head. So right now they added this new audio for balloons while in the air. So you should be able to hear the balloons at least give you an indication that there's a balloon above you. Reduced of the volume of small prop destruction sounds, such as chairs, beds, fences, etc. Removed reverb from pickaxe swings. Removed outdoor ambient sounds when gliding. So that's the new audio stuff. Bug fixes. The glider deploy sound no longer plays twice when using a glider redeploy. Okay, so that's good. Uh, in certain cases, you could hear it playing two times, uh, doubled up. So you. So it seems like they fixed that. Fixed glider land open sounds, ducking the Victory Royale music. All right, that's another good thing. Uh, improved music volume when reviewing gliders with music while in the lobby. Pirate cannon movement sound no longer stops after sprinting for over 10 seconds. Fixed looping balloon pop sound uh, after going through a rift. Okay, uh, what I'm not here, what I'm not seeing here though, is that they didn't fix the audio uh the the ambient noise audio and also the um i, I want to call it uh the directional audio kind of like when you're hearing certain things from a different direction you can kind of turn and then you know that that thing is happening in that direction what i'm finding right now is that when i'm inside of the game and i hear something it seems like it's coming from all around me um, and, and there's no directional audio. So I don't know if that's fixed yet. We'll double check within the game and see if that is all fixed. Now, the UI binding section, uh, you can now key bind, uh, key binds. The keyboard bindings are now categorized to make finding actions you want to rebind a lot easier. That's good. Marker system, the new marker system was added within the game system. You can add hover details for in-world markers, actions. A player may take on a marker, uh, will appear in these details. Marker details will appear when the reticle is placed over the marker. You can now mark vehicles uh, and found consumables such as apples, reworked display of item markers to increase readability across all platforms. So that's good. Items will display as large icon for a short time when first marked and will reduce in size when a player aims near their location. Markers are now sorted by distance, reduced screen, snot, screen size of squad waypoint uh, markers to reduce view obstruction. The minimap markers updated to match in-world markers. Oh, that's good. So basically the relationship between minimap markers and your real in-world markers will closely match. So that's good. On keyboards, there is now a keybind option to specify a dedicated key for placing a danger marker. Okay, so basically on the keyboard, since there's a lot more keys, uh, instead of double tapping on your selection for uh, um, 
basically for the marker selection you double clap on the marker selection and they would place an enemy indicator now it's basically just uh you you can you can bind it to something else on the keyboard and then you can have one for the enemy marker and then one for just marking uh standard items as well uh, double clicking the ping up button to place a danger marker is no longer blocked by items on the ground. That's good. You can now ping while riding in a vehicle reliably. You can now mark while a bush. Please continue to let us know what improvements uh, you would like to see for the marker system. Squad nameplates and team arrows now become more transparent when aiming down sights. That's a good thing. Restore the ability to view all of your current challenges while in a match. Yes, finally. Uh, for some reason, they took this out. I have no idea. I don't know why developers, they'll add something and then they'll take it out. Guys, if you added something, just leave it in because somebody's using it at that point. Uh, wrap things up in a hurry. Uh, you can now apply a wrap to all sorts of, uh, to all slots by choosing apply to all uh, when picking a wrap in the locker. Oh my gosh, thank you very much. This is a quality of life thing that it's like, I don't wanna go into like all seven of those things and put the same wrap in there. I want the same wrap. So uh, I usually don't choose a different wrap for each one. I just put the same wrap on everything and I'm done. Uh, but if they give me the option to choose, multiple wraps then i will but at the same time i want to apply one wrap to replace all of them so that's good that they did that enabled camera control on some reward types when viewing challenges okay that's good challenge info panel to challenge challenge info panel in the lobby now defaults to party assist while you are in a party all right that's cool but i think you only get one per day so i don't know if they want i don't know if i want that defaulted because then that means i'll lose mine so I'll have to double check and see. Uh, bug fixes. The Lux bundle is now uh, displayed in the challenge screen along with the Blackheart and Hybrid bundles. Wraps are now previewed on the highest resolution version of the vehicle or weapon in the lobby. Fixed an issue on consoles where you couldn't select party assist for the last challenge in a bundle. That's interesting. Uh, fixed an issue where the next stage of a challenge was not automatically set to party assist. Fixed an issue where the animation and sound effects would play twice when selecting challenges on a controller. Fixed an issue uh, where scrolling with the mouse in the challenge screen would sometimes jump around unexpectedly. All right, that's awesome. Uh, replay, add bus paths to the minimap. All right, excellent. Uh, mobile, all right guys, so if you guys are playing on mobile, uh, here are some uh, feature benefits for you guys. Introduce the new auto fire tuning feature to allow adjustments per weapon. This was done previously for other weapons, but we've now added this for pistols. Added occlusion to footsteps on Android. Improve the quality of some sound effects on mobile and switch. All right, so that's awesome. Bug fixes fixed an issue with the shoot button getting stuck in a continuous fire loop or being unable to fire without being able to reset. Fixed an issue that caused touch players to need a more specific crosshair location to interact with the use button. Fixed turbo build not starting when going from edit to build mode with the input held. Yes, finally. Every time, you know, for some reason, uh, I noticed when I played on mobile, uh, and, and you try to hold down on the input, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, re, it wouldn't build correctly. Uh, it basically looked like it reset, or it wouldn't, it wouldn't catch it, so it wouldn't build. So that's a good fix. Fixed left trigger action getting stuck when using a Bluetooth controller. Fixed weapon stats on the inventory panel for mobile. Fixed auto run not fully sprinting if sprint by default for controller is set to off on mobile. Fixed build mode being fixed build mode being exited if a build piece is selected before releasing the build combat mode button. Fixed dragging an item off the hotbar, triggering use items on mobile. Fixed throwable items trajectory. Fixed throwable items trajectory line persisting when a player is driving different vehicles on mobile. 
All right, guys, and that is it. That was a long patch, guys. So you went through the whole patch. Congratulations. That was definitely a long one. Hopefully, uh, all these quality of life things that they added uh, were good. All the all the necessary items that they added were also good. So hopefully, guys, we will begin to see a lot of excellent um, uh, things from from the from the patch here. Uh, there's also some new skins that will be coming out, so you guys can go ahead and check on those as well guys thanks for being here thanks for joining us we appreciate each and every one of you guys we'll see you the next time later